so we're going to go over third molars and third molars typically erupt around 70, 17 to 21 years old the mandibular third molars typically have four to five cusps what makes the maxillary third molar so u unique is that they can have anywhere from one to eight cusps um, in terms of their shape the mandibulars are going to be pretty much square shape while the maxillary the big thing that, they, that the, the books say is that it's wrinkled um, meaning that from the occlusal view you're going to see that this tooth looks basically like raisin so it's kind of easy to distinguish between the two teeth specifically that the maxillary um, has very a very random uh, morphology in terms of the out the crown outline it's going to be wider mesial distally than buccal lingually. And the maxillary third has the smallest occlusal outline. In terms of the oblique ridge on the maxillary, it's poorly developed and often ab absent, and this is the oblique ridge. So you may sometimes see an oblique ridge, but more likely you're not going to see anything. Um, the crown specifically tapers from the buccal lingually, so if you look at here we see kind of this buccal lingual taper. And it's more narrow on the lingual side than, um, so it's more narrow as we go towards the lingual than the buccal, which is kind of obviously seen and tapers from the mesial to the distal so from the mesial to the distal we have this kind of taper um, in terms of the roots there's going to be the mesial and distal roots in the mandibular th uh, third molars and these are typically short roots and if you look right here we see that they're kind of fused so uh, they are going to be seen as these fused roots more than anything else and if you think about where the third molars lie, there isn't a whole lot of space as we go further posterior in the, in the mouth. And as a result, there isn't a whole lot of space for the roots to develop. So that's a big reason why you'd expect to see more of a closed root than an open root. In terms of the mandibulars, at the apical third, you're going to see a curve distal. You're going to see the roots curve distally. And the thing that you should know about the mandibular third molars is it is the shortest of all the mandibular teeth. While the maxillary uh, maxillary third molar is the shortest of all the permanent teeth and a way to remember that is max is another way of saying the maximum so the maxillary are the max shortest teeth that was a pretty bad way to remember it but it, it's silly enough that you, you you'll probably you will probably won't forget it um, and, and so the mandibular third teeth, uh, sorry, third molars, they often resemble the second molars in the sense that the occlusal table looks a lot like the second molars where it has this cross sign. Um, and as I said, the maxillary third, it's going to have the most vari morphological variation of, of the teeth. Um, typically, your third molars are going to be smaller than your first and your second molars. Um, they're bulbous with fatter contours. They have a smaller occlusal ta uh, table. 
So if we were to compare this, these occlusal tables to the second and first molars, we're going to see that these are significantly smaller um, than the first and second molars. The roots, as I said, are going to be shorter, and that's just because as you go po more posterior, you have less space. So it's going to be a little harder to have a fully developed root or have a larger tooth. Now I know a lot of dentists say that you should extract the maxillary third molars and the mandibular third molars, but there's actually no evidence stating that you have to. It's What happens is because of a person's jaw size, they might not be able to reach the third molars and as a result they're not able to brush those teeth, leading to decay. And so it's suggested to remove those teeth just because it's harder to reach them. Now if somebody has a larger jaw, those teeth may become very important, especially when the second or first molars are extracted. You can use those third molars for support um, for a bridge or for prosthetics, for other prosthetics. Well, if you have any questions or comments about this video, you can leave them below. Um, I've also made a all my notes available, so if you want, you could uh, look in the captions for a link to download all my notes. It includes a very helpful um, table of all the information you need to know for the molars. Uh, please like the channel, and um, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up.